Nesson is brought to you by Aflac, Dunkin' Donuts, Verizon, W.B. Mason, and the Yaki Foundations. on Saturday night as the losing streak reaches four and frustrations mount. A new day and a new plan to end the road trip on a positive note as Tim Wakefield battles Rick Helling in an improving O squad that has won eight straight at home. from Camden Yards in Baltimore, Maryland. That's it presents Boston Red Sox baseball. Today, the Red Sox take on the Baltimore Orioles. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo. As always, joined by Jerry Remy. Game three of the series, and the Red Sox still trying to find their bats again. Well, it's been a prolonged slump for the Red Sox on this road trip, and Grady Little said this morning, for the first time this year, he finds guys trying to do too much right now to get themselves out of the slump. Go back to the basics. Go back to what they've done all year. One positive today, they got Bill Miller back in the lineup. That should certainly help the offense. It's Rick Helling up against yesterday's birthday boy, Tim Wakefield, and it's next on Nesson. time to get the best deals on built Ford Tough Trucks. F-Series has been the number one selling truck in America for 26 years running. Ford Super Duty has more pulling power than any truck on the planet. And F-150 has more available torque and payload than any other pickup in its class. During Ford Authorized Clearance, get F-150 or Super Duty with zero financing for up to 60 months or up to 3,000 cash back. Get to your New England Ford dealer now. Society says that your mind isn't hungry enough. They say your arms aren't strong but you are going to prove to them that you can handle the really big stories, the stories that unfold. All right, now show them your strength. Uh-huh. Yeah. Woo! Strong minds, strong bodies. The Boston Globe, your world unfolding daily. And turn and fold and turn. Barr sends it deeply to center field. Welcome to Boston, Kevin Millar. Way back. For Kevin Millar. What's up, Millar? Goes yard. Red Sox take a 9-8 lead in the top of the 16th inning. Struck well to left. Up towards the monster seats and a monster mash for Kevin Millar. He makes it look easy, doesn't he? Good seats are still available by calling 877-RED-SOX-9. Boston Red Sox Baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, by your Boston area Lexus dealer, by Citizens Bank, and by Dunkin' Donuts. Well, look at the USS Constellation here in the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. Of course, the sister ship for the Constitution in Boston. And a look at the beautiful Inner Harbor here in Baltimore. And what a lovely day it is today at Camden Yards for Game 3 of this three-game series between the Red Sox and the Orioles. Boston trying to salvage the third and final game of this series and what has uh, been a quiet uh, series for the Red Sox from an offensive standpoint. Something you really could not have said at any other point for any extended time this season. And you sort of just wait here day to day for it to break out once again and uh, one of the key factors to the offense this year for the Red Sox has been Bill Miller of course the second in the American League with his batting average and after missing a couple of days Bill is back in the lineup today for the Red Sox well that should certainly help Don and uh, getting him back in the lineup the guy that is second in the league in hitting and of course a tough couple of days for Bill Miller and a tough couple of days for the Red Sox they hope to get on track and at least salvage one game of this three game series against the Orioles the Orioles are taking the field here in Baltimore, accompanied uh, by some kids. It's part of the uh, Kids Day here today at Camden Yards. And uh, we're just moments away from the National Anthem today from Baltimore. So we'll head down to the field for the National Anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we welcome Mercury, who will honor our nation with their rendition of our Star Spangled Banner. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave through. Nicely done here from Baltimore. Red Sox and Baltimore Orioles ready for game three of this series. And well, the weather has uh, been a little bit threatening here over the weekend at times, but uh, certainly very fortunate that uh, there's not been a significant rain delay in this series. And today, blue skies above. Let's take a look at the visiting Red Sox starting lineup brought to you by Dodge. Top of the Boston order, Johnny Damon leading it off. Todd Walker at second base. Nomar Garcia par at shortstop. Manny Ramirez still the DH. The Red Sox expecting him to perhaps go back to left field at the beginning of the homestand. David Ortiz at first base. Kevin Millar in left. Trot Nixon in right. Bill Miller back in there as he bats eighth. And Doug Marabelli, as always, catching Tim Wakefield today, batting ninth. And the defense this afternoon for the Orioles. Tony Batista will be at third base. Davey Cruz the shortstop. Brian Roberts at second base and Jeff Conine at first base. Left to right, Larry Bigby, Luis Matos, and Jay Gibbons. Robert Machado behind the plate and on the mound right-hander Rick Helling. Helling last year with the Arizona Diamondbacks signed as a minor league free agent back in February by the Orioles. You see the numbers of six and seven. One thing about having Helling, he does give up some home runs. 20 for a total so far this season. Maybe today the Red Sox can take advantage of that in his career against Boston, six and three with a 4.83 ERA. And the umpiring crew, C.B. Bucknor has the plate. Tim McClellan at first base, Tony Rendazzo at second, and Ted Barrett, the umpire at third. Let's check today's game notes brought to you by New England Toyota dealers. The last four games, a 215 average for the Red Sox with eight runs scored. The Orioles 297 team average since May 18th. That's the best in the major leagues. And 99 career wins for Wakefield with the Red Sox, ninth all time on the Red Sox list. We're available. Today's broadcast can be heard in Spanish by using the SAP function on your TV set. Buenas tardes, amigos. Johnny Damon in on the left side to face Rick Helling. And on the grass at third is Tony Batista. In case Damon bunts as Damon takes strike one to begin the afternoon. Damon at 271, 10 homers, and 47 runs driven in. Damon at 289 against Rick Helling as uh, two home runs in his career against Helling. As Rick Helling spending a lot of time as a member of the Texas Rangers, spending parts of five seasons as a member of the Rangers. On the ground to shortstop, Davy Cruz is there, and he throws out Johnny Damon. It's 92 degrees here today in Baltimore, they tell us, to begin the game. Warm and humid again. There are some thunderstorms expected maybe later on this afternoon here in the Baltimore area. Hopefully the game will be complete by the time they blow into town. We've been very fortunate with what uh, was forecasted here over the weekend. As Todd Walker stands in for the first time today. 281, nine homers, 
And 58 RBIs for Walker. Rick Helling, six foot three, 241 pounds. Big right hander from Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Signed by the Orioles as a minor league free agent. A lot of guys who have had successful major league careers this offseason found themselves in a tough spot. And Helling was one of those guys having to sign a minor league deal. Walker out after the 2-0. with a long career in Texas, two different stints in Texas, also was in Florida. And last year spent time in Arizona. Line down the right field line, a foul ball. And it will even the count of two and two to Walker. Red Sox will see a variety of different pitches from Helling, the straight fastball. He'll also sink the fastball on occasion. He'll throw the curveball slider, a straight change, and an occasional split-fingered fastball. At that time, we'll count three and two. Only a former first round pick, he was a 22nd overall pick in 1992 by the Texas Rangers. And a former 20 game winner, he won 20 games in 98. Back into the seeds foul. He was 20 and seven that season with the Texas Rangers, his finest seasons from a win standpoint. Last year in Arizona was 10 and 12. 30 starts for the Diamondbacks. The off pitch to Walker. He got it. First strike out of the day for Helling. The first two Red Sox are erased. Helling does not have an overpowering fastball. That one uh, clocked at only 87, 88, but he throws it, those off speed pitches, which makes that fastball look just a bit quicker. Also, excellent location outside corner. Two down for Nomar Garcia Para. 318, 18 homers and 74 runs batted in. The supply of the Red Sox offense from a run standpoint here last night with a two run home run. The ball that he crushed to left field for his 18th home run of the year. Of that pitch in the hole, nothing in two. See, that there looks more like a cut fastball than a slide. A very late break on that uh, from Helling. Nomar thought about it, but didn't pull the trigger. And it's one and two. While Nomar was hitting a two run home run here last night, Mia Hamm scored three goals <laughs> in a soccer game. And she plays in Washington, right? Yeah, I saw the highlights last night on the uh, news after we get back to the hotel. One, two to Garcia Parra. Fouls it off. And it looks like Mia's here today to watch No March around the hotel the last couple days. And of course, we a game last night. One of those goals was a header, I think. Yes, from a long way out. On the ground towards third, a tough hop. Batista has it. And it throws in plenty of time to get Nomar. One, two, three, go the Red Sox in the first. They get nothing. The Orioles coming up from Baltimore. First Orioles coming to the plate at the bottom of the first. Their lineup brought to you by Dodge. Ryan Roberts at the top of the order for Baltimore. Luis Matos in center. Jeff Conine at first base. Jake Gibbons had a great night last night in right. Tony Batista at third base. Larry Bigby in left. Davy Cruz at short. Robert Machado does the catching. And Jose Morban is the DH batting ninth. And that lineup today will be facing Tim Wakefield. Wakefield going for his ninth win of the season. His 100th as a member of the Red Sox. So far this year, 1-0 with a save against the Orioles. He is 8-8 eight eight in his career. Actually, a lot of the guys that have had success against Wakefield are on the disabled list for the Baltimore Orioles. Guys like Sir Hoff and Segui. In case you're wondering, Albert Bell is still listed in the stat sheet for the uh, Baltimore Orioles. He's now been on the DL 867 days. <laughs> That's a correct number. 
And he has to, right, for insurance purposes. Yep. Stay on the roster somewhere as this is grounded foul outside of first. Well, those are some ominous looking clouds up here to the right. I don't know if you noticed them. I did notice those clouds, and hopefully they'll just pass on by. It is uh, very dark off to the right. Ryan Roberts leading it off. It's a piece of that, fouling it down the first baseline. 276, three homers, and 26 runs batted in for the Baltimore second baseman. The Orioles beginning the day, three games under 500 at 52 and 55 coming in. And the Orioles have sort of turned the corner here. This is about last year where they went in just a horrendous yeah. second half of the season. Which they had lost something like 34, 36 games. Grounded towards second base. Walker there. And they'll throw the first to David Ortiz for out number one. Let's look at the rest of the uh, Red Sox defense this afternoon. Bill Miller back in there at third base. Nomar the shortstop. Todd Walker at second and David Ortiz at first. Once again, Manny the DH. So Kevin Millar in left field. Johnny Damon and Trot Nixon. Doug Mirabelli, as usual, doing the catching for Tim Wakefield. One away, and here's Luis Matos, who's put together a very good season. The center fielder for Baltimore. 329, eight homers, and 29 runs batted in. In there for strike one from Tim Wakefield. Baltimore will stay home and continue their homestand as they welcome the Minnesota Twins beginning tomorrow night in a four-game series. As this one's fouled off. Red Sox will have tomorrow off, and then they'll host the Anaheim Angels. Anaheim Angels coming in, and of course the Orioles also coming in for a series over the weekend. Popped up. Right side. David Ortiz underneath it. He makes the catch for out number two. You know, those clouds, Don, it may not be the clouds that's casting the shadow over Camden Yards. It may be Wally who's doing so, trying to change the luck here of the Red Sox. Is that Wally Zilla over the city? Wally Zilla, yeah. <laughs> I've also noticed that he is in a different spot here in the booth trying to shake things up. The upside-down thing didn't work for you. I guess at home. He's floating in the air today. <laughs> trying to get a win on this road trip. What is holding him? Is the bill of his cap? He's floating, Don. He's floating. Oh, he's actually floating. Yeah. Here's Jeff Conine, the first baseman, just under 300 at 295. 15 homers and 75 runs batted in. It almost hit him. He spun a little bit out of the way, and apparently it did hit him. He was talked into that, I think, C.B. Buckner, because he did not give him the call right away, and then Conine talked him into it. Wakefield and Marabelli are going to argue this. Yeah, Grady Little's also not going to come out. You know, where is the effort to get out of the way of the baseball, too? That's the yeah. other thing if it did hit him. Take another look on replay. Well, he did spin away from it and apparently just got a piece of uh, the uniform somewhere, according to C.B. Buckner. Wakefield can't believe it, as he believes Conine talked him into it. As Buckner didn't do anything there for a while, and then Conine looked back at him, waiting for him to call it, and didn't run the first base or anything, and then all of a sudden he did. So. Conine is at first with two down. And here's Jake Gibbons. A cleanup hitter for the Orioles. A 299, 17 homers and 75 runs batted in. He's had a big series here against the Red Sox. Four for four last night with three doubles. That's the third time this year and the fourth time overall in his career that he's had four hits in a game. And he's now hit safely in his last five games at a 571 clip. Field missing away. 3 0. Tim kind of glaring in at CB Buckner trying to figure out where that pitch was. Not overly thrilled with Buckner out of the gate here after the hit batsman situation with Conine continues the inning. There's a strike, 3 and 1. 
That's also tough, uh, obviously, for umpires with the knuckleball. You really have to concentrate, stay with it as long as you possibly can. It's tough to hit, it's tough to catch, and it's also tough for umpires to call pitches on. Where it crosses the plate, I think, is something that's this is fouled off. Sometimes where it ends up after crossing the plate is dramatically different from where it actually crossed the plate. That's exactly right. It's so difficult to catch for a guy like Mirabelli or any catcher that, you know, a lot of times you end up jabbing at the pitch. It actually crosses as a strike, but when you look at the glove, he may be just a few inches off the ground. Every time a hitter looks back when there's a strike call, how could that be a strike? He just picked it off the ground. <laughs> Well, they had all kinds of uh, problems in Texas. Doug Mirabelli with four pass balls in that game. Donai takes off, and there's ball four to Jay Gibbons. So the Orioles here with two on, and hit batsman and now a walk, both with two outs in the inning. Sensed a little bit of, uh, I don't know, tenseness down in the clubhouse this morning. Yes. Uh, the fact that Different. things have not gone well on this road trip. Not as relaxed as we normally see it. I would agree. I don't. I can't think of another time where that happened. The only time I can remember it kind of being that way was in Philadelphia after that very, very tough yes. loss. And the extra inning game in which Red Sox had a couple leads at different times and could not put it away, and then the Phillies came back and won. The next day, had that same feel that I had today. One and zero to Tony Batista, the third baseman. Swings away and lifts it to center. Johnny Damon there to make the catch, and the Orioles strand two in the bottom of the first inning. We played one more score from Baltimore. Craft the one. The second annual WEI Jimmy Fun Radio Thon will be held August 22nd at Fenway Park. Three special live events will accompany an 18-hour broadcast, which begins at 6 a.m. A panel discussion with owners of the Red Sox, Patriots, Bruins, and Celtics. A lunch with current Red Sox players and a cocktail party with Boston sports legends John Havlicek and John Hanna. For more information, call 877-738-1234 or log on to WEI.com. Second inning, the scoreless game so far from Baltimore. Manny Ramirez to lead it off. And in there is the DH again today for the Red Sox. And he has not been able to return to left field after having the injury occur in Texas. He 322, 25 homers and 79 runs batted in. And that quad is still a little bit tender for Manning. Broken bad grounder left side. Batista ranging to his left. And he gets to throw there in plenty of time to retire Manning. Boy, that's something you almost never see, and I think it's happened a couple of times in this series where Manny has actually been jammed on a pitch. Very seldom do you see him break his bat, and the reason for that is he's usually a hands inside the baseball hitter. Gets the hands inside, gets the good part of the barrel of the bat on it, on the baseball, and very seldom cracks a bat. Right there, that fastball inside on Manny. Got it right about the label and just shatters the bat. So Helling has retired the first four Red Sox he's faced today. David Ortiz stands in. The first baseman hitting at 283, 12 homers and 54 runs batted in. To right field, Gibbons heading back. That is going to be by him and one hop up into the crowd. A ground roll double for David Ortiz in the first hit of the afternoon for the Red Sox. Tell you what, Ortiz has had some shots here in this series. The one last night that was hit all the way back to 410. I mean, any other ballpark is probably a home run. Here it was a long out. This is a scorching line drive that's got a hit on that warning track and bounce into the stands for the ground rule double. 29th double for David Ortiz as the rain starts to fall here in Baltimore. Gonna be a passing shower. That's it, Don. Loose guys right behind it. Evan Millar stands in. <laughs> 287, 17 homers and 64 runs batted in. I think we need to start traveling with our weather center. Take it on the road. <laughs> Into Millar. 
Yeah, I don't see any of these clouds hanging around here. There's blue skies above. Yeah, it's just this one big uh, thick cloud above us, and it looks like blue skies right behind it. So hopefully this will not interrupt action. But right now, it's coming down pretty good. A lot of folks stuck in for cover here in what is another very good crowd at Camden Yards, not nearly the crowd we had here last night. Barr fouls it off back into the seats. up at two and two you mentioned uh, not as big a crowd today certainly but still uh, a lot of Red Sox fans here for the final game of this series last night was the second largest crowd ever at Camden Yards they had 49,000 plus here last night and large contingent of Red Sox fans back again today final game of the series as the Red Sox hope to salvage a game in this three-game series. Red Sox fans were a bit unruly on our way back to the <laughs> yes. hotel last night. A lot of questions about what's going on right now. Some suggestions. As also to what some suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> it is really raining now. 3-2, swung out a miss. Millar strikes out. Second strikeout for Rick Helling. And there's two down. Yeah, right now it is absolutely pouring. The grounds crew, but the CP Buckner's made no move. Now they're talking to the first base umpire, and uh, looks like they're just getting in a position to where if they have to push it out, they can do so quickly. But uh, right now, the umpires continue play because they also look up and see plenty of blue sky. They've manned their positions. Two down for Trot Nixon. I think seventh today for the Red Sox. Nixon takes ball one from Helling. 321, 20 homers and 66 runs batted in for Trot Nixon. Third consecutive season. He's had 20 home runs or more. And had a ninth inning home run against Texas, which of course tied the score at three at the time, but Alex Rodriguez broke up uh, the Red Sox hopes of winning that game with a grand slam. Ortiz at second, two down in the inning. Strike to Nixon, one and one. This is the strangest thing. There are blue skies above off to the right here, and it is raining. I think the rain is just about done. It's slowing up now, and it looks like the sun's trying to peek out again. is up top that time two and one to Nixon John Nixon who had really an incredible July from a power standpoint a 10 home run month of July in fact 17 of his 20 home runs have come in the last 48 games beginning June 4th hit three homers over the first 47 games as you can see the sun has returned and the rain is now gone This is to Nixon. So once again, the rim dog has correctly sized up the situation from a weather standpoint. The passing shower indeed. Big round of applause from the crowd as the sun comes back out. Pitch to Nixon. In there for a strike, and it's a full count. Jack walks away, shaking his head. I don't think the Red Sox to this point are particularly pleased with the level of umpiring from C.B. Buckner. Uh, Wakefield not pleased in the first inning. Nixon thought that pitch was low.
Ortiz in scoring position at second base with two down in the inning. And a full count to Nixon. Brock turns on it, sends it foul. Deep and far, but foul down the right field line. And ahead of that pitch from Rick Helling. The Red Sox are one and four on this current road trip. Nixon has enjoyed success here at Camden Yards in the past. Strikes out this time. Back to back case for Rick Helling, the Red Sox fan, runner in scoring position. Inning and a half done, no score for Baltimore. Baltimore, no score as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Well, it's three hours of fresh fish, fun, and more. Charlie Moore, Nesson's Mad Fisherman, and your host for Nesson Outdoors, New England's outdoor programming block, featuring Charlie Moore Outdoors, Divers Down, and Northeast Journal, and Camo Country, Sunday nights, tonight, 8 o'clock on Nesson. Sturbridge, Massachusetts is here. And, uh... They missed the real Wally here, Jerry. We mentioned uh, yeah. it earlier. This is an imposter. Or just exactly. This is the uh, stand-in. Uh, Orioles are not supposed to know anything about it. Because the real Wally's up uh, in that hand mass challenge. On the ground to first off the bat of Larry Bigby, and Ortiz handles it alone for the first out of the inning. Have you got any reports from Wally? As nothing. Dally? Nothing. Of course, I'm sure they're very busy and fatigued and everything. So, no, I have not. I hope by tomorrow I'll get some report. Maybe later on today, but uh, nothing yet. One down for Davy Cruz, the shortstop for the Orioles. Sun darting in and out of the clouds here today. As we had a passing rain shower last inning, it is now gone. Partly cloudy skies above. Cruz ducking out of the way of that pitch. Well, the Red Sox had some chances early last night, and Strands ran some runners in scoring position. And here today, they've had a chance. As in fact, they were 0 for 5 over the first two innings with runners in scoring position last night. In the first two innings, stranding four. And David Ortiz was standing at second base with one out, and Alaron Nixon did not get him in. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Rick Helling, and that chance went by the boards. That's the way the trip has gone, with the exception of game one. at the foes the Red Sox face here in this trip and would hope that uh, they could gain some ground or add to their total against Texas and Baltimore and that's not been the case so far they will have lost both series to shortstop Garcia Parra is there and he throws out Davey Cruz two down well Nesson's new weekly half hour show Red Sox Rewind is coming up today after the post game show Red Sox Rewind gets you caught up on all the news of the past week both on and off the field that's Red Sox Rewind today right after the post game show and also Mondays at 5 p.m. Two down for Robert Machado. A catcher who is seven for 15 with the Orioles this season a home run two runs batted in. And after the first pitch lifts it in the air to left center Millar moves over. And makes the catch for the final out. It's a 1 2 3 second for Tim Wakefield. We play two, no score. Baseball and Nesson is brought to you by your New England Toyota dealers, by Bob Stores, by Coors Light, and by Volvo, the official vehicle of the Red Sox. Is that Reading, Massachusetts? Yeah, Reading, Massachusetts. To the top of the third inning, Bill Miller, Doug Marabelli, and Johnny Damon to bat here in the third. The Sox have one hit. David Ortiz with a double in the second inning. Otherwise, Rick Helling has retired everybody else that he has faced, including three strikeouts over the first two innings. Bill Miller has missed the last couple of games after the wisdom tooth surgery, which 
Tuk was actually pulled, kind of an emergency type situation. After really struggling on the plate from Texas here to Baltimore the other night. The air pressure and, of course, the infection of the two. This is lined into right. He picks up where he left off. A base hit for Bill Miller. Red Sox have the lead man on for the first time today. Well, for every run of the Red Sox catch stealing this season on Nesson, you have a chance to win a Lojack stolen vehicle recovery system. Log on to boston.com slash Nesson. And to the date, opponent and runner's name for your chance to win the Lojack caught stealing sweepstakes. Well, Bill Miller back in the lineup today, tied for second coming into the game uh, in average behind Ichiro. Ichiro 338, Miller 328, Milton Bradley 328. There's Doug Marabelli. Does the catching for Tim Wakefield. Did he go? They'll check first. Yes, he did. Tim McClellan said he offered. The guys that can run, you can get a very good jump on Rick Helen. Is it a yeah he is he's uh, one of those guys that he's really uses his legs to push off which most pitchers should do but he's got strong powerful legs and has somewhat of a high leg kick does take quite a bit of time to, to get rid of that baseball with oh, a small lead at first as Marabelli swings away rounds it foul over by the Orioles dugout and it's one and two to Doug Marabelli you know, Bill Miller could have been used last night late in the game should they have needed uh, him to pitch hit last night, but still a little bit woozy yesterday from a lot of the medication that he was on. He felt like he was in slow motion. He said yesterday before the game. I would think it'd be tough to hit a major league fastball if you feel like you're in slow motion walking around the clubhouse. <laughs> the one-two. It is popped up foul back in to our left. Doug over the last 33 games has hit a 281. We started the year off very slowly in April. Six for 31 in the month of April, hitting just 194. And it's up now at two and two to Marabelli. He's had three home runs on the season. And his last one was a monster solo home run off Toronto's Roy Halladay. He finally had his string broken up. With consecutive victories. What a year it has been for Roy Halladay, but uh, Doug Mirabelli got the better of him, crushing a home run in Sky Dome in Toronto. This is hit pretty well down the line in left field towards the corner and the ball, and it's gone. A two-run home run for Doug Marabelli, his fourth home run of the year, and the Red Sox lead it two to nothing. Talk about home runs, and there's one for Doug. Now the ball that Marabelli handles the best from the right hand, and the one that he generates most power is the ball down and in. Right there, about five high from the middle of the plate in. And if the right-handed pitcher leaves the ball there, Mirabelli's got a shot to hit a home run, and he certainly did there. That is a very similar pitch than the home run he hit off Halliday up there in Toronto. About the same pitch. Johnny Damon grounded out to short his first time as he swings and misses at that pitch. We had Mirabelli in the home run pool today. I think uh, Phil did it, if I'm not mistaken, the gentleman we had up here earlier. Uh, center field came right there. Oh, okay. Go on in there for a strike. Going two now to Damon. There he is, the winner. Pat out there in center field, handling our center field camera. The Doug Marabelli today in the home run pool. the tape from Arabelli 341 feet talks it over with Eno Guerrero well, the Red 
Sox with another two-run home run. They had one here last night. It was all the offense they had. As Nomar Garcia Parra hit a two-run shot last night. Maribelli's done it here today. Well, I mentioned down at the uh, top of the show that uh, home runs could be a factor for the Red Sox today. That's the 21st allowed by Rick Helling. He's had a reputation all through his career of giving up a lot of home runs. Away to Damon, and just the first walk given up by Helling. So, kind of settled down here after giving up a single and then a two run home run. And then he walks Johnny Damon. Still nobody out of the inning. I'd like to see the Red Sox say, keep the pressure on. They've been trouble scoring runs recently. Damon on first base. So you've got the Orioles right now back on their heels just a bit. You know, steal. Try to steal. Try to keep some pressure on. You get thrown out, so what? Little meeting first at the mound by Mark Wiley, the pitching coach for the Orioles. You're not kidding, Jerry, about to the home runs that he's given up over the years. You I wouldn't back. kid you, Don, I, about anything. I never doubted you, but I wanted to check just for myself. And in, 19, <laughs> in 1999 with Texas, he gave up 41 home runs. And that was in 219 and a third innings pitched. Then he gave up 38 in Texas in 2001 last year. In 30 starts and 175 innings, he gave up 31 home runs in Arizona. So he can give up home runs with the best of them, and uh, he has done that here today. A two-run shot for Doug Marabelli. Well, from the Red Sox point of view, they hope it's not the only one that he gives up today. Red Sox need a big offensive uh, display here this afternoon to kind of put everyone at ease. Especially with the off day tomorrow. And here's Todd Walker, who struck out swinging his first time up. Starts off behind. Mark Wiley, the pitching coach, was out there to talk to the right-hander. Settle him down after a single, a home run, and a walk. To begin things here in the top half of the third inning. There's Mark Wiley. Coming back in plenty of time at first base. And the lack of bunt singles for Johnny Damon. I was surprised that there were so few so far this year. You think because he was struggling, he was trying to make contact so much and uh, working on hitting at times after struggling during the first half and just trying to get back into a groove again. I don't know if you said before sometimes bunt singles and things like that can yeah, let you go. You know, the one encouraging thing from Johnny Damon, he had a bunt single last night, which incredibly only a second of the season. He attempted one in the first. I'd like to see more of that from, from Johnny, you know, and actually. He could use a little uh, refresher course because his form and technique is not quite, you know, as good as it can be. This is fouled back to the backstop. It's such a confidence thing, bunting. I mean, it's just like hitting, you know, and I always found that if I was not hitting well, I wouldn't bunting well for some crazy reason. They say, well, make sure you bunt because you can get a hit. Fact was, I, I couldn't bunt either when I was in a slot. <laughs> He's been on 14 straight games. That's something you certainly want from your leadoff hitter. Stands at first with nobody out here on the top of the third inning. Good pitch to go on if he's going to go here. Good sized lead and appeared to be stepping the wrong way for a moment. Still able to get back. Doesn't seem like the track took much of a beating though with that little rain shower that he had. So I don't imagine it's all that slick out there. Got a big lead. Ooh, 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 he blocked, didn't go. Maybe he probably got a bad jump. Yeah, a couple of steps towards second base, uh, but decided to put on the brakes. Didn't feel like he had that good a jump. Pretty good guys can tell that. You know, some guys just take off regardless. Uh, certain guys with more experience, they realize they don't have a good jump, and after a couple of steps, can, can stop. Trying to keep him close over there at first base. Now the 3 1. There goes Damon. The pitch swung on and popped up. Right side, the second baseman Roberts drifting out to shallow right. 
And he'll make the catch, Damon, back to the bag at first with one away. That came very close to being catch's interference because with Damon off at first base, the catcher came charging out to make the catch on that, and then the swing by Walker didn't miss hitting the catcher by very much, and of course, he made contact with the catcher on the swing. That would be catcher's interference. So watch the catcher come out of his position right there, and that bat didn't miss by very much uh, hitting the catcher's bit. One on, and here's Nomar. He grounded out to third base his first time up. Omar Garcia Parra beginning the day ninth in the American League in hitting, 318 coming in. The Sox with four hitters in the top ten in the American League. up now one and one the middle, of course leading the Red Sox coming in at 328 there is at 322 Nixon at 321 and Omar Garcia par at 318 in the air to shallow right. Gibbons didn't react right away, but it's up there a good distance, so he has time to recover. And he makes the catch for out number two. Damon back to the bag at first, but now two down. Here's Manny Ramirez, grounded out to third base his first time up. Last week's American League Player of the Week. He, like many of the Red Sox, had a very good July. Snap throw to first. Damon was a ways off, and he's out. Machado with a snap throw to first, and they pick off Damon to end the inning. A two-run home run in this inning for Marabelli as the Red Sox on top 2-0. By Affleck. By Citizens Bank. And by G. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy along with Tom Karen back in Baltimore. Red Sox on top two to one as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Our producer today, Patrick Cavanaugh, director Mike Narachi. Associate producer is Greg Petranzio. Glad you've joined us for the final game of this series and road trip for the Red Sox. And Tracy uh, assisting us up in the booth here. I mean, she takes charge of this booth. She definitely takes charge of this booth. There's absolutely no doubt who is in charge. And she keeps you in line also. The 0-1 is fouled off the right side. There's no question that uh, whatever happens up here only happens because she says so. <laughs> what do you think? The best stage manager in the American League? I, I think I'm, that statement is a fair assessment. I think, uh, yeah, way up the top, and yeah. then uh, everybody else a distant second. A little intimidating, though, you know? It is, yeah. You're always kind of nervous that she might yell at you or something, but that's good. Keeps you in line. They duck it back out of the way of that pitch. It evens up at 2-2. Two two. Only two degrees to begin the afternoon here in Baltimore. Well, he has given up a two-run home run to Doug Marabelli, but as the Red Sox on top, two to one. Foul down the right field line, back and out of play. Red Sox fan down there able to make that catch in foul ground. Well, there's a pretty good chance if there's a foul ball, it's going to be a Red Sox fan that gets a souvenir. And he fouls off another. Manny's timing in this series has been just a little bit off, and you've got to wonder if it's because of the quad problem. He just, just doesn't seem to be as sharp as you normally see him. He's had his hits, but uh, he's overdue.
towards the end of the Orioles dugout. Well, it's a left quad, right? Yes. So would that be the leg that he's picking up that he normally goes into the motion with? You're right. I wonder if it is affecting him yeah, in any just, way. At times, he's looked off balance, which you very, very seldom see from uh, Ramirez. Yeah. For seven with three strikeouts in this series against Baltimore. Inside, and he gets hit. The 2-2 pitch gets him, and Ramirez makes his way down to first base. See Helling trying to go back inside. He, he hit him, excuse me, he jammed him last time, broke the bat. This time uh, ends up hitting Ramirez. Trying to get that same result by going back inside, but this time too far inside and gets Manny's a uniform shirt and actually knocks it right out of his pants. Watch uh, the shirt come out of the pants. <laughs> He's all tucked in over there now as he stands at first base. David Ortiz coming up. He was able to double in the second inning. With three Boston hits. Ortiz was stranded at second base in the second inning. As impressive fashion, Rick Helling was able to get out of the inning. One out and a runner at second when he struck out Millar and Nixon back to back to end the second inning. There's three strikeouts on the day. Moving's up at one and one now, two Ortiz. Ortiz had eight home runs in July and 18 runs batted in. Two and one now to Ortiz. Flags out there in left center, blowing from left to right. And above the bullpens out there. Of course, the bullpens here are staggered. All the more in the lower one, the Red Sox up in the top one. Uh, it's kind of like they're on top of each other from this vantage point, but they're not. The Red Sox set back. Ortiz fouls it off the left side. I think that's one of the neater parts of this, and there are so many great parts of this ballpark, but uh, that bullpen setup is pretty cool out there. And a good vantage point for all from the bullpens. Two and two to David Ortiz with Manny Ramirez at first and nobody out. Ortiz jolts it towards right center field. Back goes Matos back onto the track to make the catch. Front of the wall out in right center field. And David Ortiz retired for the first out of the inning. Got a few track shots in this series. David Ortiz has been wearing out the warning track here at uh, Camden Yards over this past week. And another ball hit very well. But Matos right back to the warning track to make that catch that not quite as deep as the one he lit last night that one last night was back toward that 410 mark the biggest part of the ballpark one down for Kevin Millar who struck out swinging his first time up in the last eight games Millar has hit at just 188 and in the midst of a six for 33 over the last nine games now. This is away. One and one to Millar. Still a great season, though, for Kevin. 17 home runs. He's three shy of his career high, which was 20 home runs in 2001 as a member of the Florida Marlins. Beyond the Red Sox dugout on the third base side, he's down one and two. Kevin Millar, 31 years of age. And in the first of a two year deal with the Red Sox, club option for 2005. So Millar's going to be a member of the Red Sox for the next few years. Inside to Kevin, two and two.
Big difference at home from Alarion as far as the batting average goes, but he's done better in home runs on the road. There's so many great numbers from the home standpoint for the Red Sox this season. They've had so much success at Fenway Park. Best home batting average belongs to Nomar Garcia Parra in the American League. And Bill Miller is a close second. Nomar hitting at 385 at home at Fenway. Bill Miller at 372. And that's 1 2 in the American League in that category. And of course, the Red Sox as a team, the best of the majors at home. Also in the top 10 in that category, Manny at 349 and Nixon at 340 at Fenway Park. And they'll be headed back in that direction after this game. Ramirez is running. Millar is swinging. And he gets a base hit into left field. And he stops at second base. The Red Sox have two on with one out. It's time now for our Aflac trivia question. What Maryland native won 105 games in his Red Sox career? We'll have the answer for you in the next half inning. Didn't I have that last night? No, it was another Maryland question, but it was over home runs. Oh, okay. This is wins. Malai well, singled. And at second base, one down. Here's Trot Nixon who struck out swinging. right side. Brian Roberts ranging two strides on the outfield grass into right. And the Orioles second baseman makes the catch two down. Let's go to Tom Carrot, Tom. Thanks, Don. I'm here with Mercury, the quartet that sang the national anthem, Bob, as part of the group, and you're a big Red Sox fan. Absolutely. Been for 50 years. And that's part of the reason you chose MIT as a college? That's right. Um, it was uh, about, I lived about two blocks from uh, Fenway Park and uh, stayed up there for about eight years. Just well, just to be close to the Sox. They had a bit of a clothing issue. Let me see what you got here. Brought a Rem Dog shirt, but they wouldn't let you sing the national anthem with a Rem Dog shirt. Uh, no, no. They uh, they said to you know keep it in the back pocket, hide it. Uh, you show it any way you want to. But I got to show it to uh, our boys in the uh, in the press box there. I think they're encroaching his civil liberties. Guys, back to you. <laughs> That's some form of censorship, is it not? To... Yeah, but. Imagine an MIT guy wearing a Rem Dog <laughs> shirt. That's, that's a we've come a long way. What doesn't belong with that? <laughs> yeah, something doesn't work. There. Something is wrong with this picture. They did a great job too singing they the did. national anthem. So he's very intelligent and he wears Rem Dog shirts. Bill Miller singled his first time up. Bill one misses up and away. One and one the count. Well, you're not offended by the fact that the Orioles personnel would not let him wear that shirt on the field. I get offended by nothing here. I love this place. There is it second Malai at first, two down. There is a strike. One and two. When he disagrees, he backs out. And here's an area the Red Sox need to improve in right now. 0 for 9 in this series with runners in scoring position. Tom Karen's into it with the Oriole mascot, I think. I think this, they dropped the gloves. Everybody's on the mascot. Breaking ball missing up and away. 2 and 2. They dropped the gloves up there, TC and the bird. Out. He went lunging after that pitch. Four strike out for Helling. And the Red Sox strand two. Three and a half done. Two one Boston. This one two to one. Let's take a look at the game summary so far in this one. As Tim Wakefield's gone three innings, giving up one run. That was the home run for Luis Matos, his ninth of the year. Rick Helling has gone four innings, giving up two runs. The two run home run for Doug Marabelli, his fourth. And Bill Miller back in the Red Sox lineup with a single and a run today. As the Red Sox have a 2 1 lead as we head to the Baltimore half, the fourth inning. And the breeze headed uh, from left to right, it appears across the outfield. Well, it's changed a little bit. Jay Gibbons leads it off and takes strike one from Tim Wakefield. 
And the Yankees in Oakland wrap up their three-game series a little bit later on this afternoon. They have split so far. The Athletics winning game one. Yankees winning a high-scoring game yesterday. They wrapped up Barry Zito. This is lifted foul down the left field line, back and out of play. Tell you, we've got quite a stretch coming up. We've got, uh, obviously, the Angels at the homestand, then the Orioles. With that day note, day night, day night doublehead, excuse me, mixed in on Friday. And then it's Oakland and Seattle for two solid weeks, right? A healthy diet of uh, Oakland and Seattle. Gibbon strikes out, third strikeout for Tim Wakefield. And there's one away in the inning. Let's time out for the athletic trivia question answer from an inning ago. And our question today what Maryland native won 105 games in his Red Sox career? Lefty Grove, 105. And 62 in his career. That was uh, from 1934 through 1941 with the Red Sox. He was born March 16th of 1900 in Lana Conning, Maryland. And uh, that's sort of interesting today as Tim Wakefield draws closer to 100 wins. If he can win today, he'll have it. He'll get 99 career wins with the Red Sox, although he's a native of Melbourne, Florida, and not of Maryland. You mentioned that the Yankees are at Oakland today. That's Andy Pettit against Mark Mulder. Another, action, another yeah. great pitching matchup out west. You're right. A lot of Oakland, a lot of Seattle. Two good ball clubs. Very tight wild card race with Oakland at the moment. Batista grounds it to Garcia Parra at short. The throw to Ortiz in plenty of time. Two down. Now you mentioned those uh, great players from the state of Maryland. Maryland, of course, uh, has a tremendous lacrosse players. I mean, this place, they're crazy about lacrosse around here. Are you a big lacrosse fan? You know, I really don't know much about it. Uh, some of my kids' uh, friends play it. Matter of fact, he has one friend that's a very good player. But I, I, I've never watched a lot of it. But the people who play it absolutely love it. University is always a team that does very well in the NCAA year in and year out. You're right, though. It does seem to have its own niche. I mean, people who play it absolutely love it and are obsessed with the game. Go two in there for strike three. Larry Bigby down by way of the K for a strikeout for Tim Wakefield. In order for the Orioles, four done, two one Boston. Order two one Red Sox lead. Get the Globe's award-winning sports coverage every day. Call 1-800-984-5335 for 50% off home delivery. The Boston Globe, your world unfolding daily. We head now to the top half of the fifth inning. And Doug Marabelli leading it off. Marabelli, Johnny Damon, and Todd Walker to face Rick Helling, who's thrown 81 pitches in the first four innings. Marabelli hit a two-run home run off Rick Helling in the third inning. And the Red Sox are holding on to that one-run lead now as it's 2-1. to one. The Orioles answered on a solo home run for Luis Matos, their center fielder. His home run was his fourth of the season and his first since July 8th. Shortstop Cruz on the back and he throws out Marabelli. One down here on the top of the fifth. Because we've never seen a lot of Davy Cruz out except, you know, against him when he was Detroit and of course now at the Orioles. But the Orioles people really talk very highly of Davy Cruz. They say very professional player, uh, comes to play hard every day, very good in the clubhouse, especially with young players. Very solid performer. He's had a pretty good series here against the Red Sox. Tires Doug Marabelli at first base for the first out of the inning. Johnny Damon's 0 for 1 with a walk. He was picked off after walking in the third inning. 
And a snap throw by the catcher, Robert Machado. Threw in behind him at first base and picked him off. And then a little overzealous at first base and a secondary lead. Notice the catcher of Machado wearing some tape on the fingers, and that makes it a little bit easier for not only the pitcher to pick up signs, but the infielders. Near the middle infield, the second baseman, shortstop, they want to know every pitch that's coming. That's helped them set their defense, and it helps when you, you can see that the white tape. Damon sends it down the right field line. Jake Gibbons moving over, looking up. It is gone. Johnny Damon hits his 11th home run of the year, and the Red Sox lead it 3-1. to one. The second half continuing to be very good for Johnny Damon. Well, whatever tape finger Machado put down that time to Helen, keep throwing that down because uh, <laughs> that's the one that's going out of the ballpark. Well, Johnny Damon has come a long, long way since the All-Star break. Started this game at 371, picks up another home run, his 11th of the season, and now has 48 runs batted in. Here's Todd Walker is 0 for 2. He has struck out and popped out to second base. just kept carrying to right. Jay Gibbons moved over to the track and thought he might have a chance, but just carried his way out of here. Now remember, it's only 318 right down the line in uh, right field, and it really doesn't go out all that much where the scoreboard area is. This one sails away. Bob Uke would say just a bit outside. Bob Uke going into the Hall of Fame last weekend. That was a terrific thing. I guess his speech was really funny. We saw him this year. Actually, you were off, but we uh, were in Milwaukee this year earlier. Had a chance to visit with him prior to going into the Hall of Fame. One, two, slap through the infield out to left. Walker has his first hit of the day and is aboard with one out here in the fifth inning. See, that's exactly what Grady Little was speaking about this morning. You know, guys trying to do too much. Now, that time, Walker, like the club has done almost all season, they get a pitch away, they hit the ball away. It seems like at times in this road trip, they've not done that. They've tried to pull the ball, maybe trying to do too much. So Walker aboard at first base after Damon had homered. And another home run given up by Rick Helling. Garcia Parra is over two. He's grounded out and flied out. As he pops this up, foul ground first base way. Jeff Conine standing in the first base coach's box makes the catch for out number two. Omar a bit impatient there. Omar obviously a first ball hitter, whether it be fastball, breaking ball, but this ball appeared to be up and out of the strike zone. Omar chased it and popped it up, and he's not happy at all with that at bat. That runway gets, uh, that gets worn out, you know? <laughs> it's a tough. <laughs> You see a guy go directly down that runway after a bat. He's generally not happy with his at bat. And some portion of that runway is going to be injured in the very near future. Whether it be a wall. And he fouls this one off there. There are many places where you can see actual punching bags down the walkways, which I think helps in protecting the property of the uh, hallway. But Omar's back very quick. Now, they like to call them stress release uh, apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> stress release apparatus. hit by a pitch his last time up as he sends this one foul to the backstop. See what I mean there, Don, yeah. about Manning? I mean, he, he generally, he covers that outside part of the plate beautifully. That time, it's almost like he's just flicking at the ball away. Walker at first, two down here in the top of the fifth inning. One thing, too, I think he's so conscious of the inside pitch right now because he got jammed in the first at bat, then hit in the second at bat. And maybe his sights are set middle in, and that's why he just flicked at that outside pitch. 
again, highlighting the fact that if you're a pitcher and you can move inside, you get guys thinking even more. Sure. This is a great example. Going away again. Way away that time, one and two. Well, you may have seen on one of the shots of the dugout when Nomar came in. Uh, Jeff Supon is here with the club today. He did arrive last night in Baltimore. Was activated the day before the game, and the Red Sox designated Lou Collier for assignment, uh, which was uh, something that was anticipated. Collier been with the club this last week. Here's Jeff Supon coming over, of course, in the deal with the Pirates. He will pitch on Tuesday's schedule for the Red Sox, but he's joined the team. Rejoining Boston Red Sox, Jeff Supon. It's interesting seeing Supon because obviously the last time with the Red Sox, he was just a baby in the game of baseball with major league level. Now he's a uh, seasoned veteran returning to the Red Sox. Make his debut at 20 years of age, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. And you now Nipper coming up together from Double A, the Trenton Thunder to the big leagues. And a much different guy now. Swing and a miss. Ramirez goes lunging again at a pitch away and strikes out. Fifth game for Helling. Red Sox get a run on the home run by Damon. Boston on top 3 1. Davy Cruz to lead it off in the bottom of the fifth inning. He takes ball one. Swing and a miss by Cruz, who bounced to shortstop his first time up. Ooh, number in front of the plate, Mirabelli out quickly. The throw in there and in time. Nicely done, Mirabelli able to throw over the left shoulder of Cruz. A tough play, but to retired is Cruz. Let's check in with Tom Karen, Tom. Well, Don, thanks very much. Of course, Red Sox Nation spans coast to coast. The Internet brings these fans together. And I hate to give it a plug, but the RemyReport.com brought these people together, right? Absolutely. We are all Rem Dogs and all in the chat room. Now, Haya here brought a, a serious sign. I don't know if you're going to try to hold it up, but, but there's only two of you here. And, and she spent, how long did you spend on this? About three days. And it's got everything going on it. It's got the Rem Dog. Try to turn it around towards the camera if you can. Show that way. There you go. We're going to enlist a bunch of Red Sox fans. Bunch of Orioles fans. Here you go. Sit down now, Haya. Let them see it. You can see serious artwork. They got the real Wally there. They got the Rem Dog. They got everybody's name. Not the imposter Wally. That's the real one. But uh, all, and you get together and talk about the game every night on the internet, right? Every single night. And whether win or lose, we're always there. Apparently, there's a little wagering on what my procedure was, too, Rem Dog. So thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> What, what did they think it was? Can you hear us still, TC? Did you get the leading? Uh, the because of the new medical laws, I don't have to uh, really release <laughs> any of that information. <laughs> they, they didn't think plastic surgery? No. Okay. No, it was not Botox. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great group, Don. You know, they, they uh, I've done a couple of chat sessions with them, and they are loyal, loyal, loyal Red Sox fans. They watch the game and are on the internet all night long talking back and forth. They've made a lot of nice connections around the country. and They've been a, they've been a fun group to, to really uh, associate with. They just absolutely love this Red Sox team. Machado strikes out two down in the inning where Bond is next. So you're kind of the Chuck Woolery of the internet now because you're matching people up as well. I mean, these are relationships that are being created. No, I don't. I don't get involved. No, I don't get involved in that. We've had to toss a few people off, but uh, for for the most part, they've been excellent. And they, it's amazing. I mean, they sit home, they watch the game, they're constantly on the computer talking. You know, I've done probably three or four chats with them, and they're very good questions, excellent questions. No one missing, two more bond. You know, the amazing thing is, is you don't realize how loyal and true a lot of these fans are, you know, until you get a chance to, you know, communicate with them through, through that way. It's a nice way to be in touch with them, but I mean, some people, they just, they can't sleep if they lose. I think they're being thrown out right now. Tom, T the, uh, TC <laughs> being thrown out? No, the, I think they, those weren't their seats. No, it's some guy goes behind them. So, so it was not <laughs> Botox or plastic surgery for TC. No, huh? we're running out of things. I mean, I just assumed, I mean, his face looked much tighter to me. And I thought that that's the tuck had been done there. But now we're not sure what procedure he had that he missed. Two weeks. In the air to center field. Back goes Johnny Damon. He'll drift back. This will take him almost to the warning track. Just shy of it. And he makes the catch to end the inning. In order to go to the Orioles in the fifth, it's 3-1 Boston.
I bet you Noah got pretty hungry staring at those two cows while holed up on that boat. Probably thought to himself, there are a lot of other animals. Who's gonna miss them? Hats off, Noah. You're a stronger man than me. It's the unexpected touches that make an anniversary special. Announcing the Lincoln Mercury Anniversary Clearance, featuring end-of-the-model-year savings on every Lincoln and Mercury SUV, including the award-winning Mountaineer with no-charge moonroof and leather seating. $1,545 in savings. Now get 0% APR for 60 months or up to 4,000 cash back on select Lincoln Mercury SUVs. This is one anniversary you don't want to miss. Hurry to your New England Lincoln Mercury dealer. and Jerry Remy back in Baltimore 3-1 Red Sox on top well you want to stay tuned after the game for WB Mason's extra innings New England's Red Sox post game show extra highlights extra interviews and extra analysis hosted by Bob Rogers and a new lineup of studio analysts after the last inning the action just beginning top of the sixth inning back at Camden Yards in Baltimore David Ortiz, one for two as he doubled in his second inning. And then fly to the warning track out in right center field his last time up. Well, as hard as Ortiz has hit the ball down in this series, he deserves a home run at some point here in uh, Baltimore. He has hit a lot to the warning track. I think the longest certainly was last night to the 410 marker out there in center. And there's nothing to show for it after eight home runs in the month of July. His home run total standing at 12. Red Sox have two home runs today. Mirabelli's two run shot. Damon with his solo shot. And this is popped up foul back and out of play. Hector Ortiz, Kevin Millar, and then Trot Nixon here in the top of the sixth inning. Neither bullpen has been busy today. The starters working here into the sixth inning. some people from your website that yeah, we monitor those chat sessions pretty closely and if uh, people get out of line they are uh, tossed right out does the note come from the rim dog or is there a webmaster it's a webmaster in the air to left center field back towards the track at the wall it's gone david ortiz finally getting it up over the wall here at camden yards after a few that reached the track this goes over the track over the wall and for david ortiz his 13th home run and the Red Sox now lead it four to one. Well, you would seem it was just a matter of time for Ortiz. I mean, too many long fly balls hit in the wrong bottom part of the ballpark. Finally, Ortiz again showing opposite field power. And again, it, this is a good example today, Don, how they've gone back to that outside pitch, taking it the other way. Ortiz has the power to get it out of the ballpark. And as predicted, Helling giving up some home runs. Kevin Millar, the batter, David Ortiz, was so frustrated hitting it to the track several times in this series, but uh, this one out of the ballpark to left. You just had the feeling, I mean, he's hit too many balls well and deep, but to the wrong part of the ballpark, and sooner or later he was going to find some seats. 
Millard chops it to third. Tough hop up off the lip of the grass. Batista fields and throws him out for the first out here in the sixth inning. You know, we kid Tom Karen a lot, to, but this has been a very difficult weekend for Tom <laughs> because there are so many Red Sox fans here. They all want to be on television, and uh, of course, he's getting bombarded down there in the stands about people wanting to get on. And, and TC does the best he can to get as many on as possible. He's had a tough weekend, though. It has. There have been a few that have been very disappointed that they were not selected. <laughs> Nixon 0 for 2, a strikeout victim in the second. He popped out to second base in the fourth inning. Nixon with a wild cut there, and he's down 0 and 2. I heard you actually said that uh, this was tougher than Yankee Stadium the last time we were there at Yankee Stadium. I think there's more Red Sox fans here over this weekend. Of course, the weekend series with the Orioles. Well, Red Sox fans should be very proud because the folks who uh, are out in the, in the stands tell us that uh, they are between Philadelphia fans and Yankee fans who come down in huge numbers mm -hmm. to these games. It's the Red Sox fans are the, uh, the best. The most polite, they said, and they know their baseball. The one, two, hit high and deep to right. Will it stay fair? It's up and it is gone. Trot Nixon takes it out of the yard. The fourth home run of the day for the Red Sox, 21st of the year for Nixon, and the Red Sox lead it 5-1. to one. And there is the 100th career home run for Trot Nixon, and it puts the Red Sox on top 5-1. to one. And number 21 this season, you can see there why Helling gives up a lot of home runs. I mean, his fastball is in the high 80s, fairly straight at times when he leaves it in that area it becomes a very good pitch for power hitters well this has really gone as advertised so far today Red Sox now on top. This is lifted down the left field line. Foul. Back and out of play off the bat of Bill Miller. Driscoll up in the first action in the Baltimore bullpen of the day. Warming up in front of Homer Simpson. <laughs> One, two, up and away. And it evens up at two and two. There's <laughs> I didn't notice that the first time. How about that shot? <laughs> and sending it deep and foul down the right field line. <laughs> Miller strikes out. Second time today that he has struck out. That's a sixth strikeout for Rick Helling and there's two down in the inning. You can tell Miller looking inside because every pitch that's inside on Miller, he pulls and pulls hard. But that time the fastball, excuse me, change up away for the strikeout. Uh, the previous strikeout in the fourth inning was a fastball that was away. See Machado set up on the outside corner. Perfect pitch there by Helling. It was Doug Marabelli who homered back in the third inning at the time to give the Red Sox a 2-0 lead. Chop foul outside a third. One and one now. 
think it's starting to get a bit overcast again just to our right over that first base side and see the ground crew again in the preparation uh, with that that top they're sitting just behind it just in case Rebelli hits one high in the air to left field. Bigby ranging back. He's on the dirt of the track, and he'll make the catch in front of the wall. Just didn't have enough to get out of here. The Red Sox do get two solo home runs in the sixth. Now lead it 5-1. to one. Back in Baltimore, 5-1. to one. Red Sox have the lead here in the sixth inning. Well, it's the best baseball weekend of the summer, August 29th through the 31st. Four games in three days featuring trips to see Red Sox bar clubs at Lowell, Portland, and Pawtucket, and winding up with a Red Sox-Yankees game at Fenway Park. Plus transportation, two nights lodging, meals, game tickets, and even a Boston Baseball Marathon t-shirt are included in the package. To reserve your spot, call 1-800-336-2267. And then, Jerry, before we head to the sixth, we were passing along some bad information on Nixon. That is actually his 99th. We had shown it as being his 100th. It's home run number 99 for Trot Nixon. So he and Manny Ramirez are stuck at 99 right now. Manny's is in a Red Sox uniform, of course. And uh, Nixon with his 99th career home run here today. So well, maybe he'll have 100 before the day is out. As the strike in there to Brian Roberts. And right now, it's starting to rain again here at uh, Camden Yards. But it's five complete, so let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. As far as the Red Sox are concerned, <laughs> anyway. Two and one, the count to Roberts. He's over two today. He's grounded out to second base and grounded back to the mound. And a swing and a miss, and it's two and two. He got a piece. center field that's going to get down the outfield was on the shallow side and running it down is Damon back by the track and standing at second base with a leadoff double is Brian Roberts it brings up a string of seven in a row retired by Tim Wakefield now they have been playing rabbit shallow in the opposite field uh, not much power going the other way but this time he does find the gap in left center field so every time Wakefield leaves that knuckleball upstairs they generally hit the ball pretty hard. Sometimes they turn into outs, sometimes into hits. That time they'll lead off double. Now we've also been informed that not only is it Nixon's 99th career, it is also Johnny Damon's 99th career today. Are we sure? I think we are, yes. Luis Matos hitting a home run in the third inning. It's in there for a strike to Matos. Nine home runs for the Orioles. Matos, the center fielder. Piece of Marabelli, and it's 0-2. It's been a weird day from a weather perspective. Uh, rain showers and then light skies. Now it's light skies, but it is still lightly raining. The fans don't know what to do. They keep going for cover, then coming back. It's kind of perfect. You sit down there. It's very warm, very humid. You get hot, and then you get a little sh cooling shower. Chop down the third base line foul. It's like, you ever been in Hawaii, Don? Yes, I have. You, you, you land on the beach in Hawaii, and the sun is just shining down on you, and you can look off toward the mountains, and it's just raining like crazy <laughs> up in the mountains, but it never seems to get to the beach. It's similar today with this kind of weather here in uh, downtown Baltimore. Or Baltimore, as they say here. Yes, they get rid of the T. They are Baltimoreans, right? Baltimoreans. <laughs> the Red 
second base. Nobody out here in the last half of the sixth inning. The Sox have had no action in their bullpen today as Tim Wakefield works here into the sixth inning. In the air to left center field. This will send Damon back. Almost to the track, makes the catch and backpedals onto it. Tagging from second and moving over to third is Roberts with now one out in the inning. And another ball that was hit pretty well. Yeah, Matos making a bid also for an, uh, his second home run of the game, but he goes back toward that 410 mark uh, in that corner. He's had some good swings off Wakefield today, but again, you see that knuckleball above the belt. Matos, good contact. Some turn into outs, some turn into hits. That time it's a long out. Roberts 90 feet away as he stands at third base with one out. Jeff Conine 0 for 1. He's been hit by a pitch. The Sox on top 5 to 1. It has been an impressive attack today from a home run standpoint for the Red Sox. Belly with a two run shot. Solo shot for Damon. Solo shot for Ortiz. And a solo shot for Nixon. Today's attendance is uh, much less than yesterday. 49 plus here last night, although today another very good crowd. 42,000 and 85 on hand for the final game of the series. And folks here tell us usually Saturday night's the biggest crowd uh, of the week. So it's kind of a fun time if you come down here to Baltimore. There's so much to do around here before the game and after. From the inner perspective, we're going out after the game, and it's all right down here in this inner harbor area. One, two is away. Here they go. What's the feel? On the way up to the elevator last night, we were waiting with a number of people uh, to get up to our rooms, and a lot of Red Sox fans, and one guy was very curious. He wanted to know what were we going to do after the game. We go out to dinner and this and that, and of course, I said, no, I go up and ride the bull. Back on the mechanical bull. This is to left field. Kevin Millar looking into the raindrops to make the catch. Two down, tagging from third and scoring is Brian Roberts, the second Baltimore run, and it's now 5-2. to two. Zach Fly for Conant. He's a league leader in that category. He adds another to his total. They got three guys in a row in this uh, lineup. Conine, Gibbons, and Batista all with 70-plus RBI. RBI. Conine picks up his uh, 76 now on that sacrifice fly. Now the lead down to three. Jay Gibbons rattles this foul down the right field line. Gibbons walked in the first, struck out swinging in the fourth. in there for a strike. He thought about it, but couldn't pull the trigger, and it's now one and two. Tim Wakefield today with five strikeouts over five and two-thirds innings. He's walked just one. And given up just two hits for the Orioles. A home run and a double. This is lying towards left center field, and that'll fall in for a base hit in front of Johnny Damon. Here's the third Baltimore hit. A two-out single for Jake Gibbons. And you mentioned, Don, the five strikeouts for Wakefield. He's got now 127 on the season, and that puts him fifth in the American League in that category. Clemens leads, Messina second, Pedro third, Halliday fourth, and then Wakefield. That looked like to be a curveball that time from Wakefield, and uh, again, location not good. He stays up in the zone, and Gibbons picks up the base hit. So after a four-for-four four night last night for Gibbons, one for two this afternoon. Check on Gibbons back to the bag at first. Hey. 
Down and into Batista. Batista has flied to center, grounded out to shortstop. So Gibbons does not have a stolen base on the season. He's been caught once. The teams like to run on Tim Wakefield or try to, but uh, Gibbons does not have a theft on the season. Batista grounds a foul ball down the line. Red Sox have some action in the bullpen for the first time today. Scott Williamson and Scott Sauerbeck. And we've not yet had a game where we can see the school bullpen in action, really, you at the matchups. The left hand to Sauerbeck, get across to Ben Williamson, and then Kim to close. The way this was setting up so far today, it's a possibility. Inside, and it gets away from Marabelli to the backstop. Gibbons a move up to second base. And they charge Wakefield with a wild pitch that time. It gets Gibbons to second base. Started out inside and just continued to go deeper inside, and uh, Belly could not knock it down. So one more base and a man in scoring position. This is away that time. Three and one now to Batista. Sox with a three-run lead in this one on top, five to two. Baltimore batting in the bottom of the sixth, and this is in the left center field, a base hit. Gibbons coming around as Damon gathers it in left center. The third Baltimore run is in. It's now 5-3 Boston. The Orioles get another. Another curveball from Wakefield. And Batista shoots it to the left of... Uh, Omar Garcia Parra, all of a sudden, the battle back here by the Orioles, only trailing now by two. Gibbons uh, had the base hit, went to second on the wild pitch, and scores on the base hit by Batista. Well, 87 pitches for Tim Wakefield today. Out comes Grady Little. Sauerbeck and Williamson have not been up that long. As he heads out to the mound, the Orioles also have action in their pen. It is a two-run game now. The Red Sox had a 5-1 lead, but it's now 5-3, and that's going to be the afternoon for Tim Wakefield to be coming off. Still responsible for Batista at first, and he leaves with a two-run lead. So a pitching change for Baltimore, 5-3 Boston. Now Red Sox fans cheering here today. At a 5-1 lead at one point, it's now 5-3. And with two outs in the sixth inning, Red Sox bring on a new pitcher, left-hander Scott Sauerbeck. Sixth appearance since being in a Red Sox uniform. He's worked two and a third, giving up one hit. Two unearned, excuse me, two runs. He has struck out three, walked three. Opponent sitting 100. Sauerbeck last worked Thursday against Texas. Two-thirds of an inning, a walk and a strikeout in that game. As we mentioned, uh, this year with uh, Pittsburgh, Limited righties to a 303 average and lefties to 11. So we will see the bullpen in action here today in its full form of Sauerbeck, Williamson, and maybe Kim. 